Hello, my name is Miss Wofford and I'm a math coach and a math interventionist at Lincoln Heights Elementary School and Spokane Public Schools. I'm looking for kindergartners out there. Hi kindergartners. Today you will need paper and something to write with to participate in our lesson. Go ahead and gather the paper and a pencil or a pen or even a marker. I'll wait while you gather your supplies. Thank you for gathering your paper and your writing utensil. Our learning target today is I can solve addition and subtraction word problems. When mathematicians are attempting to solve word problems, often we use drawing as a way to represent our thinking. I want to talk to you today about the difference between a mathematician's sketch and an artist drawing. This is a picture, an illustration of a bunny that I drew. You can see that it has lots of details. I used more than one color and I even put a label. That's an example of an artist drawing. An artist drawing has lots of detail, uses multiple colors, and is the type of drawing that you might wanna do if you're illustrating some of your writing. A mathematician's sketch is going to be different. First of all, a mathematician isn't going to spend as much time with all the details because a mathematician, when they're trying to solve problems, they're more interested in solving the problems than drawing a very detailed picture. So a mathematician who was talking about a bunny in a story problem might just draw a circle to represent the bunny. A mathematician isn't concerned that it looked like a bunny to anyone else. It just represents that there was one bunny. So this would be an artist's drawing, and this would be a mathematician's drawing or a mathematician's sketch. Today, we're gonna to be looking for you to be making mathematician sketches. We don't need a lot of details in your drawing. Let's go to the first problem. Our problems today are gonna to be about frogs. Think about what you know about frogs. They like to swim, and I bet some of you said they're green. Many of them are green, but they also come in other colors. Today, our first problem is about frogs on a log. Three frogs on the log. Four frogs in the water. How many frogs in all? How are you going to solve that? You could use your fingers. I know there were three frogs on the log and there were four frogs on the water. Maybe you could act it out. I happen to have some cubes. So I know that there were three frogs on the log. One, two, three. So I have three frogs on the log. And I know that there were one, two, three, four frogs in the water. Now I'm lucky because I have cubes at home, but you might have toys or even pennies that could represent the frogs. So right now these cubes are representing the frogs. I had three frogs on the log and four frogs in the water, and I could put those together to determine how many frogs in all. But it's okay if you don't have any of those objects if you don't have cubes at home, you could draw this out. Let's think about drawing this out. I'm going to repeat the problem for you. There were fr three frogs on the log and four frogs in the water. How many frogs in all? Well, I know that I had three frogs on a log. So there's my three frogs. And then there were four frogs in the water. Notice my mathematician sketch. I'm not spending a lot of time drawing frogs because that's not the important part. The important part is to determine or solve the answer, solve for the problem, which was how many frogs are there in all? 
Well, I had three and four more. I know that three and three, that's a double. That's six, and there's one more. There's seven. There are seven frogs in all. I know that there's seven. Maybe you did a drawing similar to mine. I'm actually going to write an equation that tells this story. I know that there, I started with three frogs, and then I added four more, and that gave me the total of seven. Three and four plus four is the same as seven. There were seven frogs. Let's try another story problem. This time, I would like you to draw your thinking on your paper before I draw my thinking. Look very closely. There are eight eyes. Can you see the eyes peeking out from the log? There's eight eyes. How many frogs? So if there's eight eyes, how many frogs are hiding behind that log? Go ahead and draw a picture and solve for how many frogs. I'm going to repeat the story problem for you. Eight eyes. There's eight eyes. How many frogs? Talk to someone in your family about how you solved for how many frogs. Maybe in your discussion, you realize that you solved it in different ways. Mathematicians can solve problems in lots of different ways. That's one of the things that makes math so much fun. We can think about it differently. This is how I thought about it. I started with the eyes. I went ahead and drew the eyes. There were eight, remember? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I can add a little dot in. Remember, it's just a quick mathematician's sketch. So there are my eight eyes. I know that I have two eyes and a frog has two eyes too. So I'm going to take the two eyes and I'm going to circle and make that a frog. So there would be one frog. And then these two eyes would belong to another frog. And these two eyes would belong to another frog. And these two eyes would belong to another frog. So I have one, two, three, four. I think that there are four frogs hiding behind that log. Did you think there were four frogs? Nice job. Let's go to our next story problem. Three frogs on the log. Five frogs in the water. How many more frogs are in the water than on the log? Picture that in your mind. There are three frogs on the log, five frogs in the water. How many more frogs are in the water than are on the log? Talk to a family member or draw a picture to show your thinking.
how many more frogs were in the water? Remember, we talked about a mathematician's sketch doesn't have a lot of details. I could use a circle or even a square to represent my frog. But this time, I'm going to use numbers. Do you remember how many frogs were on the log? That's right, there were three. So I'm going to go ahead and just write one, two, three. That represents the frogs that I know were on the log. Do you remember how many frogs were in the water? Yes, five frogs were in the water. One, two, three, four, five. There were five frogs in the water. And I was asked to solve how many more frogs were in the water than were on the log. Well, these match up. So it looks like these were the extra frogs. I'm going to go ahead and circle those. So I'm comparing the frogs on the log to the frogs on the water, in the water. And I'd say there's two more frogs. Did you think there were two more frogs in the water than on the log? That's a comparison. And there's different ways we could think about that. To write an equation, I could say I had five frogs in the water minus the three frogs on the log, and that is a difference of two. Five minus three equals two. But you might have thought of it differently. You might have thought, well, I know I have three frogs, and I know I have five frogs. What's the difference between three and five? And you might have thought, I know three plus two equals five. So you might have figured it out that way. Either way, I know that there were two more frogs in the water than were on the log. Thank you for solving problems with me today. Go get a family member and bring them back to the screen. Hi, kindergarten family. Thank you for joining us. Our learning target today was I can solve addition and subtraction word problems. A way for you to help your kindergartner at home with this task is to present your child with some story problems and have them use objects to act them out in order to solve, or they could draw a sketch to show their thinking. For example, you could try a problem like this. If three kids are riding bicycles outside, how many wheels are there? So your kindergartner could use their fingers, they could use cubes or counters, or even pennies, or they could draw the picture out. The important part is that they're working to visualize or picture the problem and then working to solve it. It's important not to forget comparison tasks where kinders have to determine which group is larger or smaller and by how much. So for example, if there are seven oatmeal cookies and three chocolate chip cookies on a plate, how many more oatmeal cookies are there? In math, it is so important to talk to your kindergarten child. Just have conversations and talk about numbers in everyday living. For example, even if you're setting the table for a meal, you could ask them to figure out how many plates you need for the number of people that are going to be eating with you. There's lots of different ways to incorporate math into the real world, and problem solving is a great way to do it. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you'll join me for our next lesson on KSPS. And in the meantime, if you're looking for more ideas for how to help your kindergartner at home, go ahead and visit the Spokane Public Schools Learning from Home website.